Hello everyone, we are once again on the road to Stadium Australia and this is a Vic Acres Wonderland. I am joined as always by the lovely Lottie. How are you? Yeah, I'm good mate, I'm good. I'm ready to get stuck in to this pod. Really looking forward to it. Got a star of a guest sitting with us right now, so really, really excited. Speaking of guests, I think we should let them introduce themselves because... There's nothing like a self-introduction, if I'm honest. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Um, really, really appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Um, my name's Maisie uh, from Devils United. Just quickly then, Maisie, have you enjoyed the World Cup so far? It's been a very interesting World Cup. I think the beauty of the World Cup is you do see underdogs. Um, we have seen fantastic underdogs so far. Um, I know... Uh, New Zealand first game underdogs um, I don't know how people would say with um, Australia with day class was underdogs in, in a kind of way I do uh, just because um, they aren't as high ranking as a lot of other teams so they're another underdog who's done sensational so far and I think we are seeing great teams like USA for instance um very young team needing to build themselves back up again and seeing what they're all about too with a, a yeah, as we'd like to say a, a brand new squad compared to the last world cup that's great to hear so we'll go straight into group c obviously if you haven't seen or as you didn't say obviously if you haven't seen already we covered spain playing costa rica uh zambia took on japan in that closing game of group c and spain uh sorry it's japan ran out winners <laughs> five nil what were your thoughts on the game um for me personally that scoreline could have been higher but there were so many offside goals in 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 throughout that game um zambia in the first half did hold out for a little bit and their keeper pulled off some absolutely amazing saves but with japan the 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 attack is wave after wave after wave and you have to be defensively solid to be able to stop stop them and unfortunately like you know in our preview for group c i didn't i d- didn't see that the defense holding out and the score line tells the whole story um other than that I, it was a good game it was a good game matt how did you find it Oh, um, it was quite an interesting one and yes if those wondering how long it took people before I'd said the word interesting it was not very long uh, interesting obviously <laughs> done it in the first 10 minutes or well, first five I should say so um, it was just a case of we don't know what Japan are capable of they're very similar in, to a couple of teams they're a team in transition coming off of the Olympics and the World Cup they didn't do very well um, but coming into this one, uh, Mazama, Mazama with a brace to Kanda and Endo also getting on the score sheet with Yuki, Yukai uh, I, with the penalty as well in stoppage time to clinch all three points. It was just one that I thought was how how do Japan carry on um, from there because they've set a high ceiling for themselves now. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts, Maisie. Am I not mistaken that Japan is one of the teams that's won the World Cup, aren't they? And I think the thing is as well, a lot of people, I, I think in a kind of way, probably would have would have been surprised over Japan. But I think Japan still have got a fantastic side. Um, and they're definitely not a team to be wrote off whatsoever. Um, I know they probably are different compared to when they have won the World Cup, but I've, every time I've watched Japan, I've been massively impressed with them. So, to be honest, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they was to go far into this World Cup because some of the teams that I have watched that I've expected to do well have done quite the opposite. So, <laughs> um, but I do think Japan will be definitely one that could potentially go far based off that first game and other games I've watched of them. Go on to Group D and Denmark took on China 
it took a long time for that goal to finally come and it came from Vansgaard for Denmark. What was your thoughts on the game itself and the goal? I think for me, with China, um, they were, you could tell that it meant a lot to them, that game. Um, as, as coming off onto that pitch, you could tell it really meant a lot. And I think Denmark, they've got a tricky, te- a tricky, tricky team. Like you've got uh, Penel Hard, she is a threat wherever she is on that pitch. Holmes Guard is another one who I think is fantastic in the midfield. So I think Denmark is a great side and to come across China, which personally beforehand I've not watched of China. So I was kind of in a way coming semi blindfolded to think I know Denmark, but I don't know China. And I think China held out very well. They'd probably be very, very disappointed with the um, the loss because I think they did work so, so hard and. Um, I don't. I think the thing is with China is there wasn't too much created to creative threat, so they knew they had to be defensively on top um, to try and get something out of that game, and maybe try and win a free kick in some kind of area to get a, a, to get the points if they was gonna get the three points. And I think that was probably what they was looking at. And I think they did have a very good gameplay. Um, but I think for me is I think they're probably going to be more glad more than anything that they're in this World Cup and I can probably see Denmark again progressing into the next rounds. Oh, sorry, give me one second. Uh, for me personally, um, it was very to and fro from what I could see. Um, fortunately, the satellite dish decided it didn't want to work because of the really bad weather. But from what I did see, it was very much to and fro. Um, uh, and they both equally want, wanted it from I also think Simone Boy was very lucky not to get that own goal um, so I think the, the relief on her face said it all um, she almost put it in the back of her net but I think as as Maisie said I, we, most of us went in semi-blindfolded and I think it's I think that's what makes the World Cup great is the teams that you don't know about and they, they're the ones that usually end up surprising you so We'll see how they do against Haiti um, next up. So I think he might actually pull it off and get the points for that game. Okay, so I will just take a quick break. We are back. So going on to Group E, it was a very, very intriguing uh, group let's say that USA took on Vietnam for the very first time the US winning that game 3-0 Sophia Smith with a brace and Lindsay Horan also on the score sheet so Macy you were you you stayed up to watch that one what, what were your thoughts on the game as a whole People call me uh, call me crazy, going crazy. Why are you up at all this time and now we're watching football? But that's the beauty of it. Um, I think for me, it was just very clear of who, who was the winner. Like, I I've, I've barely seen Vietnam with the ball, and if you want me to be honest, I I think Vietnam was very physical. They were very rough. Um, within five minutes of the game, Trinity Rodman. Uh, went down uh, just because the I can't even remember what play it was for Vietnam, but they literally got a leg rather than the ball. And I'm a massive fan of Trinity Rodman. I think she's a, a sensational player. Um, I, I, it'd be someone who I'd love to see in the WSL one day. Um, if that's going to ever happen, who knows? Um, but I think uh, Horan's goal was a, an absolute fantastic goal to uh, f- for the break just before the break. Uh, well, in that the third goal, sorry, uh, Sophia Smith scoring a brace as well. Two fantastic goals. Um, it was very uh, clear from the beginning. USA they were uh, driving for the attack. Realistically, they could have been five, six, seven nil up. That's how many chances they did have. And I think more of them was poor positioning and poor shots from the USA. Uh, but there were some couple of moments for Vietnam where they did do some fantastic. Um, some fantastic defensive work but I think for me there was quite rough um I think 
um, they, they, they were struggling in a kind of way. I don't know whether they was trying to think we need to what pass the ball very quickly. And I think they was quit making a quite a lot of mistakes when they did have possession. So I don't know whether it's just that first game and they're just more anxious more than anything. But I guess we'd have to see on how they do play in that second game to get a real judgment of them. Because the USA, even though they've got a completely different team compared to four years ago, they've still got a, a great team. And it, it's still a team that a lot of people would fret. Well, someone was uh, very happy about that game because someone had captained a certain Sophia Smith, who I'm very keen on <laughs> as well. Uh, she's a very fantastic player. And for her to get that brace at a first World Cup in a first game. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, she's had, had a brilliant season, well, brilliant half a season over the Portland Thorns. Um, so she's she's on she's an absolute on fi- on fire and form. I mean, if anybody remembers the 2019 World Cup, um, I've only had the pleasure of watching the highlights. She was she was good, uh, along with Naomi Germa, who, who that was their first cup, World Cup. But it was just nice waking up and seeing them fantasy points <laughs> on my board. Um, watch the highlights. Goals goals were great. It was nice to see Lindsay Horan score as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I can actually catch a US game um, without losing sleep. So the other game in this group was the Netherlands against Portugal, a redo of the Euros last year in that group stage. Myself and, unfortunately, Adam couldn't make it to this one. Were you there, mate, Macy, by any chance? Um, I was... I'm trying to think. I wasn't actually at the Netherlands Portugal game, but I did actually go to see Netherlands against France, where they did unfortunately get right. knocked out. But I was kind of rooting for Portugal in a way, like do I care the team after England in the Euros, just because, like they did. If it wasn't obviously for the issues, I'm not going to go into everything in the background. But they did get out of there and get into that due to circumstances and there was a team that nobody was expecting what are they about just because there's so many teams in so many players in there who are playing in the Portuguese league and the Portuguese league for the women is very hard to watch it's hard to watch for the men's like never mind watching Portuguese league for the women like it's tough as it is so I've I've watched a couple of games because um and there is some fantastic players, but I think you can see the massive difference compared to the two games, uh, how leaky Portugal was in the Euros compared to how they were this time round in the World Cup. I think probably as well, having that nil-nil draw against England, even though it was a friendly, is going to bring them plenty of confidence to say, right, we've got a clean sheet here against the Euro winners. We can do this against other teams. Um, Costa, Gomez and the centre-backs I think they've been working very well um, Diana Silva, Jessica Silva are two threats to have in the uh, the Portugal squad um, they're fantastic for club, they've got terrific pace, I think if they wasn't playing against the, Nev- the Netherlands they probably would have got a goal uh, just because of how clinical they can be but at this moment in time, the Netherlands again are under transition under a, a new manager uh, compared to the last, um, t- compared to the Euros, I've not, from what I've watched, I'm I don't, I, I'm a bit confused with the Netherlands of how they set up. Like I see, uh, I'm a massive fan of J- Jackie Gronin and seeing her as a defensive midfielder. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Because I we all know Jackie's not a defensive midfielder, so uh, everyone thinks he's good. So may, maybe I'm just probably being a bit like picker because. From what I've seen of him, he has been a, a, a men's coach. He has uh, got a fantastic rec- uh, fantastic CV and things. So uh, maybe I should give him a bit more of a chance. But I think uh, some when I've what, seen the start 11 today, I've been a little bit iffy. But I think overall, it was a very interesting game to watch. And um, I think it was just a shame that it wasn't a draw more than anything. Just because I feel like for me is that... <sighs> When you watch that game, I don't think there was too much in between them both. Maisie's spot on with that, spot on the money with that. I mean, for me personally, that game, I think every game for the for the Netherlands, for me personally, is missing Vivian Mudamar. Um, especially, and I know it as an Arsenal fan domestically, but 
it's it's just the missing piece for me. Um, as much as as much as you've got the likes of young stars coming through and like the likes of Victoria Pulova, Nesmi Brutes, Vivian Miedemar is a massive, massive miss for them goals. And and Lineth uh Beristin, she had a fair few shots and it just wasn't hitting the back of the net for her, unfortunately. Um, same with like Mar- Martins. Um, I just think they're missing missing Viv so badly. But I think for me, the scoreline the score lines throughout this group reflect the progress in women's football overall. We're not seeing those over exaggerated score lines. Um, I think the expansion of the 32 teams is really interesting. Um, but just look, looking through the stats for the Netherlands Netherlands games, um, the Netherlands alone had 12 shots and only five on target. I expect that on target to be a bit higher. Especially for the for where they're ranked in comparison to Portugal. Just on the goal itself, Van der Graft got the goal with a header uh, from a set piece. From a personal point of view, Jill Rod looked like she was offside. She was the player that was just in line, uh, just in the goalkeeper's eye line. Do you, did you think that was a goal? Probably say not. To be honest, just because of the position and of. Jill Road, but um, I, I think for me is I, I I think for me is that she was a tiny bit over, but I, I it's very hard to tell because I think it was only by slight. For me, I've just yeah, I'd have to agree with agree with Mace on this one. Um, it was just a bit odd to where Jill Road was standing. Um. But obviously the ref, the ref and the VAR room thought it stood. So we'll go on to Group F, uh, starting with the fun and game that was the France and Jamaica. And Adam would have been very pleased had he have been here. He would have been very rub it, uh, very smugly rubbing it in. Uh, as we had our first nil-nil of the tournament, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's our second. We've actually, sorry, second? Adam. So, so Adam would be happy that it is our second because he's he's already been a bit smug with those score lines already. Game itself was there. What was your takeaway? Uh, a lot of there, a lot of stuff has been talking been in the lead up to this one. Mm-hmm. I think for me, France itself it was quite underwhelming. Uh, they, they've got fantastic talent, but. Um, we do know they are missing quite a lot of players as well. Um, so they're not going to be at the best what we have seen them in the past either. So uh, they're under a brand new manager as well. That's another situation that probably potentially doesn't help. Um, I think the back line was solid. Um, when Wendy Renard, she's always going to be in that team. She's fa- fantastic, fa- absolutely fantastic. I was a little bit surprised that Cascarino... Um, Estelle Cascarino, I'll uh, um, <laughs> make it a bit more clear. Um, I was a bit surprised to see her in that centre back role, uh, just because she has she is more defensive mid. So uh, especially knowing that there was centre backs on the on the uh, on the bench, I was a bit more confused on the decision there from the manager. Um, but I think there is some attacking threats there as to what is missing in France. Um, especially I think. At time to time, I think some of the players looked and gone, where do I stand? Where's where's my position? I think a, a, a couple of them didn't look like they really knew where to go, um, how fast the ball was going to be really estimated at, the crosses. Uh, I don't think there was too much height there for um, the attacking line either. That probably didn't help with the amount of crosses that did come in, especially in the last 15 minutes of the game. Uh, Jamaica though they was very well defensive defensively with old Bunny Shaw she did get a red. Um, I know people have been quite controversial. Some people saying it should have stood. Some people saying it's not. I can understand why people think it was harsh, but I think we need to look at it with Bunny Shaw. She is a ma- a massive threat uh, for uh, for any team uh, to play against any team for a power a position. A physicality, a, a goal scoring record, because she was the second highest goal scorer in the WSL, so she's a massive threat. And I just think for me is, especially that second tackle, what she'd done to get herself sent off, that it was reckless and no need. And I think you need to be careful when you're on a yellow card as it is. So um, 
I think probably overall the ref probably had no choice in the end just because of where she was on the pitch and the fact that uh, the fact that um, she was already on that yellow. Um, Maze, Maze again, yeah, absolutely spot on with that. I was, I was at first, I was like, oh, it's a bit harsh, but when you think about it, if you look at the standard of refereeing in the WSL, she would, she would have got away with it. It's a bit, it's a bit like the uh, Kate and Kate ball to Chloe Kelly's face it's a situation for me. And a lot of people will say, oh, she should be sent off. And then, like, people like Arsenal fans saying, no, it's fine. She got in the way. It's not, not it's it's not a problem sort of thing. Um, but it, again, re- absolutely reckless. But you've got to remember the refereeing standards are a little tiny bit higher than is domestically for us. So one one thing that uh, well uh, we're notorious for is, is complaining about the refereeing. Um, so just. She, Barney Shaw, for me personally, um, she should have known better. Um, she's she is the main source of their goals um, for Jamaica. I don't know where that leaves them now. I know Jodie Brown likes to score a few. Um, they have they got Panama next. They do yeah. have because it's it, yeah they've got Panama next. So I think I that that game is going to be definitely one to watch because it's sort of two underdogs kind of fighting it out. And for the points um, but yeah no, Jamaica had a sensational performance against France for me I'm just kind of kind of going in aware of two players and and that's about it for me um, as to France for me personally the, the up top they're missing they're missing Delphine Cascarino they're mi- missing um, Marie Antoinette Cotato big time and I just feel the eye looks very lost because she hasn't got their creativity coming in um, she's normally out on that wing with Marie Antoinette Cateto in the middle, but obviously this season domestically she's she's been playing through that middle, and I'm still not overly confident with her there. Um, I also think Samba back back I was a big miss as well at the back for that for France. Um, but I think the one duel we we were looking we were, everyone was looking at was what Renard v v Bunny Shaw, and I think it's safe to say that Wendy Renard won this round. This game in <laughs> Group F, Brazil four against Panama, I think uh, was a brilliant game. For those that haven't watched it, please watch it back because it gave us the first hat trick of the tournament and also the goal of the tournament. All right, Borges got the hat trick and Zhao got the goal of the tournament contender, shall we say? Um, I think we'll go to Lottie first this time. Oh, Via Zanetti, third goal was absolutely, oh, it was just a work of art. The, the build up, the play, um, I mean, the first the first shot, like when I can't remember who it was, but, they, but she got the ball. Instead of taking her shot when she was about 10 years old, she back kills it back back to Via Zanetti, straight, straight in the back of the net. I do apologise if I have pronounced her name wrong, um, but it was just, it was absolutely the goal of the tournament so far for me. Um, Brazil were just an absolute joy to watch. I mean, Ari Borges, Pat, Patrick in one, I think, I think it's her first World Cup. I can't remember if it's all in my head, I'm probably wrong. Um, but it was just absolutely brilliant to watch. I mean, can you, Maze, can you imagine what it's like to be 4 0 up and then you bring on Marta? It's absolutely terrifying, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, no, they're, def- they're four up, top of the group. Can't wait for the next game. This is definitely one team I'm going to enjoy watching as a neutral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think Brazil are definitely ones to watch. Um, again, I haven't hardly watched any of Brazil. The only one I watched was the one against England. But they did have so many injuries in that game. Um, I know... Uh, Manchester United fans were using that Brazil game as a bit of a player uh, player profile watch because uh, uh, the midfielder Carolyn is actually linked to us um, coming into the summer or January. So I think a lot of people are using it as a bit more of a, oh, let's see what she's kind of about. Where is she going to sit into our squad then? Um, so I think a lot of people are using it in that way. But I think Brazil are definitely ones who I, I think could be a great watch to, uh, so far, and I'll be looking forward to seeing some games with Brazil. 
just on Matt, Mart- what did you make of that game? <laughs> I haven't really had your thoughts on any games yet. Come on. Oh, I, I love this. I actually, actually, this game was a ten o'clock. Uh, uh, sorry, twelve o'clock game. So I was able to come straight back from work and was like, oh, Brazil game's on, so I can have a bit of lunch and watch the game. And I actually really enjoyed it because it, it, this. I remember being at the final in Eastman, I really enjoyed Brazil and England. It was very much a 50-50 affair and the fact it went to penalties just sort of proved that. And the Brazil squad just started sambering their way through Panama like they were nothing. This is classic Brazil being trained to play samba ball at the best. And for Zhao to score that goal and... Um, Lotte, you've mentioned who asked who that player was. It was Arai Borges who did score the the hat trick. She black killed it to Hot Zhao for that goal. It was just you wouldn't think if no one else in the world would have thought to do that. No one else would have that instinct. And that's something that I think we'll we'll see more of from the Brazilians as the tournament grows. But I did want to talk about Marta. She had the opportunity to become the first player ever across men's and women to of a World Cup to actually go and score in seven consecutive World Cups. And fortunately, she didn't get it. No, I think Christina, Cristiano Ronaldo and uh, Christine Sinclair are just taking a sigh of relief again, just like Marta, when Marta was when um, in that Canada game. Um, I mean, I just, I, do you know what? As much as I appreciate how amazing Ronaldo is, I'd just love for Marta or Christine Sinclair to have this. I mean, they've been around for so long. I think Martha's first World Cup was 2003 and she was playing as a teenager then. And she's been around that long. And although she's still coming back from an, those three dreaded letters of an ACL, she, she still, she's still got that magic, just like Christine Sinclair does. And it's, it's in a way, I'm kind of gutted that we won't get to see her play again after this World Cup, although unless you're an NWSL fan, that is a very different story because she will be playing with Rafaeli. Another thing that I, I just realised with Brazil coming on, JSE, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, another fantastic striker to come off the bench, uh, a proven winner um, at Barcelona. So I think, I, I know she hasn't had the, the amount of games that she probably hoped for in Barcelona, but the thing is with Brazil, they've got plenty of squad depth all over with all different ages. And I think probably out of everybody in the World Cup, Brazil's probably got that right balance of they've got uh, uh, experienced players, they've got some players who are a bit more younger. And I think I think it's great to have that kind of balance because I think that helps a team go forward. And I think that is the main factor of England, for instance, going for, uh, winning the Euros last last time just because of the fact that we had that balance of players coming through there was the experienced players of Jill Scott, Ellen White, uh, Frank Kirby and I think Brazil have got that balance what England had back when we was the Euro winners and I think that's one of the many factors what's going to bring them forward in this World Cup. So we'll have a bit of a break now before we go on to groups G and H. You're back. Thank you for. I hope you enjoyed that clip um, of, of our mini break. Um, but we are now back with Group G and Group H. And our first game of the day was Sweden v South Africa. Matt, what did you think of this game? I had to watch it back, but I was really impressed with South Africa. They came out uh, really fired up for that. They got the first goal through uh, Magia, and they were really trying to see out that game. Fortunately, uh, Rolfo got the equaliser for Sweden. And then, who's the new signing? Who they then decided to sing Mandy to on the on the bus back, which is a lovely clip if you haven't seen it from the uh, uh, Swedish uh, Twitter feed. Um, Amanda Illestet of now Arsenal. So it was great to see that. It was a great header, I have to say. It was... It wasn't quite Rafael esque. I'd say it's a lot more lot of Ruben Moy esque, if I'm honest. When she goes up for the header and just 
narrows it straight into the back of the net. Uh, Steena Black Steenius has always she was looking to try and create things left, right, and centre. She couldn't really get that opportunities uh, as much as she would like. Lena Hertig sort of was playing, but you, you wouldn't really realise she was on the pitch, which was a bit of a strange one, if I'm honest. But it's good for her. It means minutes in the tank, and hopefully, it means that we're going to start seeing. This Lena Hertig come the start of the WSL season. Oh, definitely. I hopefully I hope so. I mean, I managed to catch the highlights of this game. Um, I mean, the header was absolutely superb from Amanda. I want to say I can't pronounce her name. I st- oh, this is going to be a struggle for me this season. We are. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with uh, Ilastra, but I think we're all going to have different ways of saying it. It's just going to have to be Amanda, isn't it? To our next game, it is Italy v Argentina. Um, I personally caught the last half an hour of this. Um, I was really surprised not to see Cristiano Girelli start. A um, bit of an odd one for me from Italy. Um, the goal was on her first touch, and that, that just says what kind of player she is. She should be starting. I shouldn't be benched. Um, yeah. Matt, what did you make of the game? Because I, I know you watched all of the 90 minutes, unlike myself. <laughs> that was the fun part. Uh, you missed a lot of the opportunities. And to be honest, Bonasea was fantastic. And <laughs> she was just doing everything she could. It was, she was literally putting balls on plates and no one could get in the end of them. It took Girelli to come onto the pitch and actually finally score for Italy to get the win. I think Argentina would found themselves quite hard done by, if I'm honest, because they did a fantastic. And the fact that you see in uh, these sorts of games where there are only nil nils or one nils, and the world rankings are a bit different between the two countries. It just shows how much these teams have developed. Usually Argentina don't do well in the Women's World Cup, but this time around, if they manage to get there, uh, get qualified, get to the knockout range, I think that will be really, um, really good team to watch and look out for. I mean, it's it's going to be, I think that group's going to wind up interesting. Um, we kind of know, I kind of feel like Sweden will wrap this group up fairly quickly um, and then we'll, we'll sort of go from there. Um, and then it's anybody's game for me at this point. I mean, losing 1-0 is not the end of the world. Uh, however, um, losing 2-1 is not necessarily bad. Because it's, they're only one goal down, so this, this can go anywhere depending on how many goals they want to score. Um, so and then, you, but moving on to our next game, uh, it's Group H, Germany v Morocco, and it's the first massive scoreline we've seen, six nil to Germany, um, and pretty much a guarantee for them to top the group already, isn't it? Really for me, um, I mean, I do feel like they could have eased off the gas a little bit, but. I think after Zambi- losing to Zambia 3-2 in the final closing minutes, they had a point to prove. Like we, We're here, we're here. To, well, not a point to prove. I'd say, I'd say a massive statement to say, we're here, this is our World Cup, and this is how we play tournament football, which we know how notorious they are for tournament football. I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, England got lucky because Pop got injured just in the warm-ups before the final. But do you know what? I think that 12th, player on that pitch was was the England fans that completely flooded that stadium and you had the little pockets of the German fans scattered all over the place and I think we did we did help help the girls get there in the end um but Morocco their first World Cup I think they'll be a little bit disappointed in two own goals um Matt I mean what do Morocco do from here they've still got to play two more games they do, and that's the hard thing. You look at Thailand losing 13-0 to the US in their opening game in 2019. 
um, in France, and it just sort of fell apart from them. When you look at this group as a whole, you could probably look at their uh, the other two matches of Colombia and Korea Republic as probably also games that they could potentially win. There's not. It would just have to be. It depends on Germany. What de- Germany turns up. Uh, when we had our fan insider with Andreas, he said there's two types of Germanys. The Germanys that just don't bother turning up for tournaments, but they will turn up when it really matters, or they just sort of fall apart. And it will be dependent on what sort of journey will come, carry on. Will they decide to carry on this form uh, into the next two games, or will they say, well, OK, we've got the six goals, we could theoretically draw our next two games, and that wouldn't that will that will see us through. Um, but I th- that game itself, Pop scoring a brace, Clara Ball scoring, Elia Schuler as well. The two on goals from Morocco are a bit unfortunate, but it happens. I believe that's the first time we've had two on goals. Uh, uh, they were the first two own goals of the tournament as well. Um, uh, it's just a bit unfortunate, really, that Morocco were on the wrong, wrong uh, side of Germany. But then again, you could probably say the same about um, whoever faced Germany first in that group. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the draw has been a bit kind to Germany, not so kind to the other three teams. But you've also got to remember the other three teams are there for a reason. Uh, Morocco have made their first um, World Cup. Colombia are there because they was they came second in the Copa de America um, America last uh, last summer, not last summer, last summer yeah last yes. summer. Um, I, I I sorry about that. I had to think about that because I was mainly watching the Euros, um, and actually being there. And <laughs> then you've got Korea Republic. They are there all there for a reason. Um, but that second place is up for grabs still. Do you think? But maybe between Korea and Colombia for me. No, you've mentioned that we should probably go on to Colombia of actually want to beat South Korea two what a two nil, um, so that probably puts Colombia as probably in the seat a little bit more than South Korea. We know that South Korea did not have a great tournament at the Arnold Clark Cup. They came bottom of the group. Um, if I'm honest. I have a feeling that South Korea are going to end up going home with bottom of that group, and I don't, I don't know whether or not they're going to even get a goal because just from the way everything's going, it might end up being that South Korea end up playing Morocco, and whoever sc- scores the first goal gets the points, or it might just come down to whoever doesn't concede the most. I know it sounds very basic to say that, but this group. I think is Germany's and then everyone else is just playing catch up. Colombia have put themselves on the map with the three points. They only need to need a, to make sure that they've got may I'll probably say again uh six or five points and then they'll be in theory into the next round. But I did put down Colombia to be second, so um it's difficult. It's definitely difficult, but Anything can happen. This is tournament football, as we've seen later on today. Earlier on today, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It depends when you're listening to the pod. Um, but again, well, we, we do record this on Tuesday evenings. Um, well, in the UK, depending on where you are listening in the world or watching, tuning in from around the world. Um, but for me, can we just talk about the uh, Linda Casado, the first teenager to score in this tournament um she's come off the back of the under 19s and the under 17s world cup and now she's already got the first game she's got her first goal and what a goal it was it was just she was down she was down on the left hand side crosses cross it in it just sort of scoops around the coop around the keeper it looks like the keeper's actually done a Mary Earps maze. I know if you are watching this back, I do apologise, and hit it in the back of the net, but it actually misses her hands on the replay. Um, what do, what what does that mean for her? I mean, she's done it consistently over three tournaments. 
Um, it just tells you what talent she is, and I believe she is at Real Madrid at the current moment. Yeah. So she Real joined Madrid, them in January. <laughs> they've got a talent there, and if you think back to Real Madrid, um, two seasons ago we were in the Champions League quarterfinals, getting that unfortunate tie to Barcelona, so the first ever El Clasico in the women's stadium at the Camp Nou, as well as the Santiago Bernabeu as well. That, it's things like that they're going to want to do and carry on. And they're carrying on with this ideology that the men's have, where they're sort of trying to rebuild female Galacticos. Um, so you, you've seen that a lot of Man City players are moving over to Real Madrid. I, I would imagine that Real Madrid will have a few more. I know I'm talking about transfers here, but Colombia have a fantastic player on their hands. She's young still, and she's causing chaos. And if Colombia do make the uh, knockout rounds, I would imagine that she'll be on for young player of the tournament, that's for sure. No, absolutely. I, th- I think I think uh, between her and... Uh... I think it's this May. I do pronounce. Apologise if I pronounce that wrong. I can't even get my words out yet again tonight. Um, I, th- I think they can make it through and get out of Group H personally. Um, I mean, she's been. I think she she's had an absolute amazing first few years with the team. I mean, she, her first appearance was age fourteen for for the for the national team was just which is absolutely incredible in itself. Um. But I just I can't see Korea or Marco getting out of this group at all, if I'm honest with you. Um, but that does sum up round one. I mean, round two has started as of today. We did kick off with New Zealand and Norway. Uh, Norway? Oh, no, New Zealand and Philippines. Sorry, I do apologise. And it, we had another historic win, but not for New Zealand. It was for the, for the Philippines. Uh, Matt, how did that game go? Huge for um, the Philippines just because it basically, whenever you think of a tournament or um, even in the men's game, there's always someone that turns around and says, Oh, that World Cup, I remember sitting watching it, and or it could be, Oh, that tournament where Alessio Russo scored the back hill, that got me into football. And then it was eight years later, they'll, they'll get a call up for England or um, Denmark or France or. Germany, Sweden, wh- wh- whoever it is, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, uh, these were my idols growing up." I was what I literally was at the Euro, it was like eight years ago, and now I'm at a yes. World Cup for the first time. Do you know what you remind me of? I think I know this is completely irrelevant to this game, but I think it was Karen Carney talking about Marta playing in 2003, and that's what inspired her to go on and play for England. So it was, it was, it's really interesting you say that because I was sitting there thinking, "I've heard this before." <laughs> It it is true though. It's essentially footballers inspire other footballers, and um, for Seri, uh, Serena Biden, I think I've got it down as who scored the goal. It's a huge moment for the Philippines as a hot nation, and it will be intre- Um, no, stop saying that word. <laughs> it will be a huge moment of not only investment and knowledge it will be a huge where were you moment so almost like our where were you when Russo scored the back hill where were you when Chloe Kelly pokes the ball home against Germany in the final of the Euros they're the sort of moments that the Philippines will have now and that's huge for them it's a little bit of a knockback for New Zealand as well because I think they would have been happy even just to have the nil nil it would have basically meant they would have gone through. Um, it just means now that they've got to come back and come back fighting. But it is all up for grabs. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of Group A, we've also got we also had Freedom Leonardo Mornum, Fidelia Volti in the Norway v Switzerland game. I've got to say it's pretty uneventful for most of that game. But you agree? Yes, and I'm seeing a lot of people now get more and more invested 
in how badly Norway are doing. They're complaining that uh, Wrighton is playing the wrong in the wrong position. They're complaining that uh, Caroline Graham, Graham Hansen is also playing in the wrong position. The fact that Freedom Marnham's not being able to get that free flowing attacking moment that she movement that she gets at Arsenal. She's not able to get those shots um, outside the box or even inside the box, and it just screams like uh, I'm. I know I mentioned it, it last time, but. If you're not, if it's all well and good being able to win these sorts of trophies as Henga and Larissa has done, but it doesn't mean you're a great coach. No, a hundred percent, I've got to agree with you there. But I was also you were raised the question: they've got all these big stars like Caroline Graham Hansen, uh, Frida Leon, Simonum, Gwrighton, and you've got you've also got the likes of Ada Hagerberg who went down the tunnel um, for this game. Um, uh, I don't know how to put this into so many words without being disrespectful to them. There seems to be a lot, of, a lot of individual players, but not a team at this point for me. I don't know if you're on the same page with me, Matt, or not. Mm. Um, I, I completely agree with the whole um, Risa, Risa situation, but they don't seem like a whole team. They weren't. I think we saw the crumblings in the Euros for me personally. And that should have been the lesson. And I thought lessons were going to be learned. And maybe that's the other thing. It's may, maybe whatever coach you have, they're not going to get on because the whole of their culture, uh, the player's culture, shall we say, maybe it's very similar to, um, I hate doing the analogy of the old England, the men's where in 2006 you had the Man United were, table, the Arsenal table. Were, yeah, they, they were all individual players. They weren't a team. That, that, we know this. If, if that's the case, then with this Norway team, something has to change. There's, uh, I don't know whether it means that you're having to move players on, or the manager, or maybe you have to find. It almost common feels, ground? yeah, common either common ground, or you need to sit down in that meeting for three or four hours. And I know it sounds tedious to have a four-hour meeting to sort of sit in a room with players and say, look, we've got no identity. What do you see as the Norway way? Next game for New Zealand is Switzerland, which is going to be an absolutely tough game because Switzerland haven't lost, whereas Philippines have lost one and won one, whereas Norway have got one draw onto the belts and that's it. So I can't see them getting out of the group unless they win. They absolutely obliterate um, the Philippines, which I don't think that's going to be an easy job. Well, if you look at it, Switzerland still topped the group with two goals. See, that's a concern for for itself, considering the fact that Switzerland do have a strong attack, as they do have in defence, as well as our very uh, Arsenal favourites in uh, Leo Valti and Noel Maritz. Um, it's just so odd to see Switzerland's be low scoring as much as this you would have thought that they would be uh, at least have three or four you would have thought Norway would have three or four at this moment you'd probably said New Zealand maybe have one or two Philippines maybe have one it hasn't worked out that way it's I think we haven't called this a group of death but at the moment this you looks the more like, off, isn't it? yeah this looks more likely to be the well the um the group of death because any essentially on that last day anything could happen we'll be back on friday with all the latest updates on the world cup and all the games up until friday night for the weekend starts um i do apologize for adam not being here tonight he is off ill at the moment. he's off sick at the moment but he will be back soon fear not but i hope you've enjoyed listening to our dulcet tones and we will see you on Friday.